I'm taking the Nintendo Switch and I'm just ever so carefully putting it to the side for the day. And instead, pulling out another somewhat portable system. Not really, it has a cord, but with an OLED screen. A lot of similarities between these two. Like the amount of fun you can have playing them. Got a bit of a stretch. I don't really have any expectations for this video. I just love VR. And recently the PlayStation VR 2 released and I've been playing a ton of games. And you know me, when I play a ton of games, I want a verbal diarrhea about a ton of games. This is not a review of the PlayStation VR 2 headset. I did that already. And my opinion on it hasn't really changed all that much. I just want to talk about the best games you can play on this thing. With all that said, let me get this big Big bulky headset that is wired, my two unnecessarily large controllers that go along with this thing, and on top of all of that, the 3D sound stereo pulse earphones that I had to buy because I would be caught dead before using those crummy little painful spikes they call earbuds, which by the way have the same sound quality of a Walkman from the 90s. These are much better, and they're wireless, so, all right. Hey, oh, I'm very busy, as you can probably tell. So I don't have time to cook. Also, it's spring now, so you need delicious, nutritious meals available on the go, prepared from chefs themselves, delivered straight to your door in a nice little box. And that way, I waste no time, and I can get right back to playing Stardew Valley. I mean, working really hard. My favorite thing about these factor meals are they're calorie conscious. Well, the ones I pick anyway. So every meal is around 550 calories. This one is Italian herb chicken and it's only 540 calories. They also make these delicious smoothies that I've been waiting to bust into. And they're only about 100 calories each. Strawberry, banana, and tropical fruit. But they also offer veggie and protein plus option as well as vegan options. Getting back into working out the last couple of months, these have been great because I can just go work out, come home, slap one in the microwave, chow down, and then get straight to work. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code BEATEMUPS50 to get 50% off your first box. That's half off of food, of food. I now get to eat fresh at home and I am gonna eat it and then get back to my very important business of playing Stardew Valley. All right. Bye. All right, so somewhere in this basement, I have Resident Evil Village physically. I can't find it for the life of me, so we're gonna pretend like this is it. The point I was trying to make, which is this is one of the only games on the list that has a physical. Resident Evil Village, which released on PlayStation 5, you can just download a free VR version of that game. Easily the game I played the least on this list for reasons that are very clear. What is happening? Because <laughs> I'm not in control. Jason <laughs> Chet says Bob is ready. God damn it! I'm a big old baby boy that can't handle scary games, but it is really great at the same time. It's fantastic. It's literally the entire Resident Evil Village experience just working perfectly in VR. It's even free if you have the main game, which is insane. The amount of extra work, dedication, and development it must take to shift a game into VR, and they're just giving it away like those guys on the streets of New York that just hand you their album for free a very scary spooky album for free it is so much exactly the same game in VR that you even have the original cutscenes a little jarring actually because you can't move in them you're just stuck in place watching it all happen around you it gets even weirder when the position of the character in the cutscene is like lying on the ground but in real life you're standing it makes you kind of feel like a turnip ready to be plucked out of the ground but there's nothing Nothing that gets my heart pounding faster than a zombie rushing towards my face while I struggle to reload my gun and remember which side of my body I left my knife. So good luck screaming your way through this one and probably missing as many shots as I did. In Resident Evil, it's really important not to miss shots and I was just out there firing that thing like it was the 4th of July. Yeehaw! After a game so stressful, how about we cut to one that is just ever so relaxing. 
Okay, so sometimes it can be really stressful if you try racing these idiots in their kayaks. I've got one which I might not. But otherwise, it's pretty relaxing. Kayak Mirage is visually jaw-dropping, featuring beautiful locations from all around the world. The kayak mechanics are physically accurate, to the point where I even found this guy on Reddit who had made his own at-home makeshift kayak rod paddle thing to use while he plays the game. You gain speed by paddling faster. If you want to turn, you obviously just paddle on one side. You can even throw your paddle like into one side and hold it there if you want a fast paced handbrake turn. You can paddle freely around open roam areas to just take in the scenery. Or you can partake in these checkpoint races where you see these other players, but I don't think they're actually there there. I'm pretty sure it's just ghost players. It's still fun, but the devs have said that real time multiplayer, whitewater rapids, and an open world are all planned for the future. I would say the only thing I'm missing in this game is smell a vision you know, so I could like smell the fresh open seawater or the river in the lakes. I, I think all of that would really heighten how relaxed I feel when I play. But you know, that's not a technology that exists, so I'm not gonna put that on Sony this time. While Resident Evil may be the game I've played the least in this video, Zenith is easily the one that I've played the most. Have you ever seen uh, the Sword Art Online? Well, yeah, it's kind of just like that. Except I don't be dying in the game, no, die in real life. I mean, that would be kind of crazy. A VR open world MMORPG that actually does a really great job at bringing the genre in a virtual reality. Right now, there's two main classes, Blade Master and Essence Mage. There are more classes coming over time, but for now you can pick between those and then you can pick DPS, tank, or support. I picked Blade Master DPS, swinging two massive swords in combat, using them to block attacks and hit weak points, but also there's special abilities to unlock and discover as you play, like throwing your swords to create AoE effects, charging up massive crits, and more. The mage class I haven't played, but it's a whole different beast. It even comes with a book full of spells that you can cast, and I'm pretty sure it all goes into hand movements and how you, you know, Kamehameha the spells. The more I played, the more depth I found. For starters, the map is actually pretty huge. I've been playing for weeks now on and off, and I've still only explored like less than half of the sprawling open world. There's loads and loads of main mission quests and side quests, collectible items around the world, but alongside everything I've said, there's a whole separate Pokemon catching mechanic. You can catch any of the bugs, critters, and non-attacky animals around the game. You can even have them follow you around and give you stat boosts. There's also cooking. You need to find, forage, or buy the ingredients for yourself, then activate your own personal mobile kitchen station where you can cut your own produce, fry and boil your ingredients. There's always loads of players around as well. There's an active community of people and they're always on mic and talking so you can find plenty of people to help you do raids or just progress through the game. You can make new friends. This one is actually a really good time and I can't recommend it enough. Speaking of games, I didn't think I would get sucked into Demio is actually pretty fire. Again, this goes into even the most simple basic premises, but put in VR can suddenly become so much more fun. This one is a tabletop survival RPG, borrowing its themes and ideas for games like Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. Essentially, imagine gathering around a table in an old crusty 70s basement with your long lost childhood friends, being able to roll your own dice, physically move your pieces around the board, and even see your friends sitting across from you making their own moves while you try and distract them by waving at them or making vulgar hand gestures. Please blur that. I get so much joy out of just actually picking up my warrior piece, putting it down, and then watching the smooth animation of it, either moving where I told it to go or attacking the creature I told it to attack. It's the first time I've experienced something like Star Wars chess or Yu-Gi-Oh in real life. I mean, I, I know it's not actually real life, but it's just cool to watch your creatures, your monsters come to life before you. You have several different hero types to pick from, each with their own abilities. You and your friends dungeon crawl through unexplored rooms looking for the exit while fighting to stay alive with massive boss fights at the end. It's a perfect game for friends who live apart but want to spend some quality time together. You know, because it all feels like you're sat around the table. And because of the game that it is, you need constant communication and teamwork, sharing that excitement over successes or disappointment over losses. And the losses are definitely going to happen because the game is stupidly hard. I mean, like, brutally hard. We can never actually beat anything because we suck, but it 
it's still good time. What the, 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 bad? This song has been stuck in my head. It's so heckin' catchy. What the bad? If you've played What the Golf, you might know what you're in for here because now they've made What the Bat. It's an all in VR and your hands are freaking baseball bats. That's all you need to know. You do everything with your bad arms, including hitting balls into windows, painting zebras, and awkwardly trying to toast some bread. And then smacking the bird that tries to take that bread. Each of the levels have a theme, like waking up and completing your morning routine or needing to make coffee for a bunch of cats, you know, normal everyday things with your bat arms. It usually starts with a basic premise and then expands on it several times in wackier and wackier ways, pushing you to think outside the box and find creative ways to solve each puzzle. Solving the harder puzzles are usually the most rewarding ones that make you laugh the most because I could try and hit the bowling ball up and around this entire course so I could realize uh, the end goal is right there and I can just smack it in. Didn't have to do the whole thing. Big brain. It's just the best kind of silly. I would compare it to like Job Simulator or the Rick and Morty VR game. It's funny and fun. It's okay to have fun sometimes. It's not all about big honking guns and military. 10-4, oh. good buddy. Out of every game in the video today, No Man's Sky VR is the one that impresses me the most. When you stand in the middle of No Man's Sky's world, the scope of it all really sinks in. This isn't just an open world game. It's an open galaxy game, an open universe game. Multiverse even? This is the entire No Man's Sky experience in VR. If you already have a save file for No Man's Sky and you wanna get the VR, you can just start playing your save file. You can even play with your friends who don't have VR at the same time that you're in VR. On top of that, every single aspect of No Man's Sky has been retooled in VR to work seamlessly. Exploration, mining and building, shooting, driving. The moment I was hooked on this game in VR was the second I sat down in my own personal spaceship, grabbed the throttle and launched out of the atmosphere and flew myself to another planet. There's no load screen, or wait times. It's one seamless open universe exploration and it's so fun to play with friends. No Man's Sky has come such a long way since launch. The team at Hello Games has released multiple patches, DLCs, content, and more while still offering this VR experience for free and even releasing a massive VR upgrade version for PlayStation VR 2's release which improved the resolution and visuals across the entire game. I've grown to really enjoy No Man's Sky but but the best way to experience it is in VR. It is so addicting. This next one, in my opinion, out of all the games on the list, has the best shooting and gameplay mechanics. After the Fall is essentially Left 4 Dead in VR. If you've played that game, you know exactly what you're in for here. Up to four friends entering levels filled with zombies around every corner. Your goal is to try and make it to the end of the level alive. There's checkpoint stations around the way to refill your ammo and items, and as well as regular zombies, you've got ugly special ones to look out for. Each one will mess you up in different ways, like grabbing you or your friends and holding them down in one spot, or a bloater that explodes and makes it impossible to see. In between each run, you have a hub world where you can see all other players gearing up for their next mission, and you can do the same here. There's a weapon ordering station where you can tune up your guns and add attachments and make the best load up possible, and you get these attachments and upgrades by successfully completing runs. The high the higher the difficulty level, the better the rewards and the stuff you'll get at the end. Which of course adds a ton of replay value, going back through and trying harder and harder levels as your loot gets better and better. It pays to search around the levels too, because if you find the hidden floppy disks, you'll get rarer drops, assuming you could make it all the way to the end without dying. The best part of this game is the shooting and gunplay mechanics. The team behind this game kind of specialize in that, previously having made Arizona Sunrise, which was reviewed positively for the same reason. The act of loading and unloading your guns is super smooth, while aiming and shooting also feels right on point. When you get in the groove of just chewing through hordes of zombies, stabbing yourself with a healing pin before tossing a couple of grenades into the crowd and desperately loading your guns back up again, it all feels really badass. Also, the cooperative teamwork as you yell at your friends, battle strategies, and take down big bosses together is just so much fun. Hey, if you like Call of Duty, if you like Counter 
Counter Strike, Pavlov is probably the game for you. The gun design are all very precise. And even though it's all digital while I'm playing, I still feel the need to handle everything with respect and care because it just feels so realistic. There is an insane amount of variety in game modes. There's even a zombie mode, which of course I went straight to. But the main mode is the classic 5v5 search and destroy. And just like my long nights of playing Valorant with my friends, this is one of my favorite game types. I've never really been a huge fan of massive team deathmatch game types where you constantly respawn and don't get me wrong, Pavlov definitely has those game types if that's what you're into. They got everything. But I really like the thrill of only having one life per round and really needing to make it count. It slows down the pace of the gameplay and allows your skills to really shine. And it can lead to some awesome clutch moments, like when there's only you left on the team, but like three of them, and somehow you're back, 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 and you're, you're the hero. The only thing that stinks about the PSVR 2 version of Pavlov is it's some new, updated, top of the line version of Pavlov and it doesn't work with the other cross-play versions of Pavlov on PC or MetaQuest. So you can only play with PlayStation VR 2 people right now. I think there's plans to fix that and update the other versions elsewhere. But yeah, the game's great. If you were to ask any VR enthusiast, what are some of the best games to start with? What VR game should I go to first? I can guarantee you Moss and Moss 2 will be among the top of their recommendations. They are perfect examples of what is possible in VR. For now, I'm just gonna talk about Moss 2, but I do recommend going back and playing the first one. It's still so good. You play as the reader, guiding this tiny, adorable, but also rough and tough mouse named Quill through her adventure. It plays out like a traditional puzzle platformer. You you control Quill's movements the same way you would any other game, jumping, attacking, climbing, and so on. But you can also interact with the world as the reader character, where you physically interact with the world as well. Like stretching out vines to create new platforms, or touching walls to make climbable ivy spread across its surface. Quill also knows that you're guiding her, and will frequently turn to talk to you or request a high five for a job well done, and that's, oh my god. That's where VR is able to transcend the genre and add a layer of connection I've never felt before. On top of all of that, the visuals are absolutely beautiful. From wonderful sculpted castles and environments to the character and enemy designs. Also, Moss is perfect for people who might get motion sick while playing VR because you're only ever standing in one place. You're not moving around like crazy. You're moving the little mouse around. You can take it all at your own pace. The puzzles are challenging, but they're not super hard. They didn't want to make them impossible so people would take the headset off to go on Google all the time. They wanted to keep you immersed and they do a great job at that. I saved the only current PlayStation VR 2 exclusive game to very last. And it's not because it's my favorite, because it definitely ain't, but because it feels like the biggest budget AAA game out of all of them. With absolutely gorgeous visuals, great music and sound design, and tight, fun gameplay. But at the same time, it is the most tech demo-y feeling game I have played in VR for a while. Horizon Call of the Mountain is a Sony VR VR game set in the world of Ryzen. Of course, you play as a new character named Raya, who is a master of climbing and archery, which is lucky because that's all you're gonna do. But I will say that both elements are done flawlessly. There's just a bit too much of them. Climbing in VR is weirdly satisfying. Scaling across a large ravine or worming my way around large mountains and structures can really get the blood pumping. I even had some Uncharted-esque moments where I was climbing and I would slip and then catch myself last second. It's a level of climbing emergency in a game I haven't felt before, but I was hoping that this, as a Horizon game, would feel more open. But it is just one straight corridor until the end. There is plenty of things to shoot at. The bow mechanics are awesome. Being able to quickly knock back arrow after arrow with no delay. And I don't know if it's the eye tracking in the headset or the new gen motion controllers, but I managed to aim in this game like a crack shot Hawkeye from Avengers. Just bat, bat, bat. I was hoping the battles with the mechs would be more in depth, but the game locks you onto a circle rail. Like you don't have to dash like side to side around it in a in a circumference. But other than that, this game really does serve just as a this is what VR can offer you. It's made even more telling by the ridiculous amount of musical instruments, painting supplies, and random other toys scattered around the levels. Which having a game like this on launch of a new headset makes perfect sense. Sure, you have people picking up VR 
for the first time, and they're probably gonna get this game, and it's gonna teach them all about VR. I just wish they had done something like Astrobot VR again, where it's a free pack-in game to kind of teach you these things, and then the game that's $60 might actually be a game. I know I'm being a little harsh, but all that said, if this is your first time in VR, Horizon Call of the Mountain will probably blow you away. I think 60 is a reach considering some of the experiences we have out there, but again, for your first time in VR, if you're just picking up the headset in this game, I do think it's worth it to experience something way more beautiful than you're gonna see anywhere else, other than maybe Half-Life Alex, if you have Steam VR, because that game is still untouchable as far as visuals go. I want to give a little pro tip before I get out of here. For anybody that has motion sickness while they play VR games, there's a hack I gotta tell you and some info. I'm gonna keep it real short. The info is the new tech in this bad boy, the OLED screen, the higher refresh rate, the resolution, all of that is what has gone such a long way to help your eyes and your brain associate with what's happening. So if you haven't tried a newer headset in a while, your problem might be fixed just there alone. But if you want an actual hack when you turn side to side, have it on snap. Don't do smooth motion turning where it looks for you because the looking for you is what's gonna make you hurl. It's the biggest mistake I see so many people do. They go, oh, snapping. Why? Ugh, I don't, I don't, that's unrealistic. I want smooth. You're gonna throw up, but it's how I play for hours and hours and hours without getting motion sick. If somehow you love this video and it does really well, heck, maybe I'll do more. Like the video, leave a comment down below with your favorite VR games, maybe ones I can talk about next. And uh, yeah, I'll do a Switch video next. I know, I, I get it, I, I understand. Yeah, no, it's fine. I actually have a lot of cool Switch video ideas, so I'm actually okay with it. <laughs> Bye.